Hi guys, it's Satch Womano. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. It is time for the April questions and answers. Without further ado, shall we find out what you rotten lot wanted to know in April? Let's begin. I'm actually going to start with an email that I got that I didn't respond to. Madeline Pleasance, I do apologise, I'm sometimes all over the place, but you sent me an email and I thought I'd respond here. Hope you're doing well. She said, I wondered if you're putting up a Q and A for April. Yes, I plan to do it every month. So uh, could I ask about vintage perfumes? I know I run a risk with these in that they may have turned in my effort to find a pre-formulated version, but it varies a lot. And I wondered if some notes in a fragrance do not weather the years so well. I realize that a lot of it depends on storage, etc. Uh, but why some should be fresh and others not. You kind of answered your own question, but there's something else I can add to that. With vintages, of course, it's always a risk. Always a risk. It's that thing, isn't it? You really want to buy a vintage, but you just don't know until you get it unless it's physically in front of you. But yes, a lot of it depends on storage. That is how there can be vintage Chanel perfumes from, you know, the 60s that still smell great. A lot of it depends, and you touched on it, materials. So top notes are the things that are likely to spoil quicker. Things that are more volatile, things that are more delicate. So if the fragrance is centered around citruses, that's usually a really good indication that the top notes can easily spoil. Things that have resins and woods and deeper notes, kind of like wine. That's how I feel about vintages. It's always a risk. Yes, storing fragrances in dark and cool places is the best thing. They can't last forever, unfortunately, but you can prolong the life of a fragrance. And yeah, it's always a risk. So stay away from things that, are, that lean more fresh and citrusy and you might be a bit safer. But um, if you get a bad one, you didn't hear it from me. Thanks for your question, Madeline. I hope you're doing well. And thanks again for the Amage Renaissance samples. That was fun. The next question came from Anna. Uh, Anna, Anna Top, Toplinen. You also emailed me. We were having a little quick chat about something. You asked me about diptyque fragrances and you said you're obsessed with their satin oil, jasmine and faint ylang ylang, supposedly saffron. Do you have any recommendations so you could enjoy the smell in the perfume? The closest I can think of is Alien Mirage. Um, I would point you in the direction of Diptyque's perfume called Omaheli. It, to me, it smells quite similar to the satin oil and it's more pronounced ylang ylang. In fact, it's about ylang ylang, that perfume. Sustainable ylang ylang, might I add. Diptyque work really closely with the people that produce the oil to make sure that the plants don't get over harvested. So it's twofold greatness. You're not hurting the planet and you are going to get to smell a beautiful ylang ylang perfume. Definitely try that one out. Really smooth, a little bit tender, playful, no scary, nasty notes. And I think it would be actually a great compliment to the satin oil. So I hope that answers your question, Anna. Thank you. So on to these guys. You guys asked me stuff. This question came from Sue Keichiro. And this was on my March questions. If you can wear only one perfume for each season, what would you wear? Hmm. Let's just do it off the top of my head. Summer would be Entre Ciel et Mer by Pierre Guillaume. It's the only aquatic fragrance I own and I don't really like aquatic fragrances, but this one is very cool. It's seaweed and pear and sun cream and strange weird saltiness. Spring, oh, that's a tough one. From my current collection, it would probably be Flora Botanica by Balenciaga. I mentioned that perfume quite a lot. Not for everyone, super stemmy, crisp, green, minty rose that's quite, I mean, it's quite a sharp perfume, but it's really nice for spring because of the greenery. Autumn would be Moth by Zoologist. Talk about that fragrance all the time. For me, it is the perfect fragrance on many levels, but it's really suited to autumn because of its kind of gentle, sweet smokiness and dusty feeling, love. And then winter, I mean, I'm gonna have to say Samsara, aren't I? There's so many things. That's a really hard question for someone that owns 150 perfumes. <laughs> Seriously, difficult. I'm just gonna say Samsara because it's wintery. I put the cream on as well when it's winter, when I go out. Cream, perfume, the whole shebang. 
Thanks for your question. The next question is from Wayne Martin. Hi Wayne, you're a member of my group. I know who you are. This was on my Avon Far Away fragrance review that I did many, many years ago. And you said, I wonder how you would rate this now. The same. My opinion hasn't changed on that fragrance. I think it's such a good cheapy. It's extremely unique. I've never to this day smelled any perfume that smells like Far Away by Avon. It is the fluffy, creamy vanilla perfume with a couple of woods and it feels a bit white musky and it's so strong as well. I mean, for the price of it, you really can't go wrong if you like that comforting. It's kind of nostalgic for me, that fragrance, and that's why I like it. And yeah, my opinion hasn't changed. I still think it's a great fragrance. The next question was also on my March questions video and it's from Veronica. <laughs> Frodmia? Hi Tom, absolutely love your videos. Well, my videos love you too. So informative, but also fun and uplifting at the same time. Thank you for doing such a great job on it. Two questions. What's your opinion on Guerlain Musk Nobile and Serge Luton's Claire de Musk? The birds are waking up. And if I may ask, what was your motivation to give up on alcohol? So the two fragrances that you mentioned, I haven't smelled either of them. So I can't comment, unfortunately. Maybe I should try them out. And my motivation to give up alcohol, gosh, I guess I'm gonna have to be quite frank about this, aren't I? It was becoming a little bit of an issue for me. That's why I'm gonna be totally transparent, which I always am anyway. Um, I've always loved my wine. It, I'm a, a, I guess you could call me a bit of a lush. I love New Zealand white wine. Um, and then during lockdown and everything, and you know, everyone was struggling with something or another, it just kind of escalated a bit too much. And a couple of things happened where I just thought, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> so I just stopped drinking. It was actually nine months ago, just the other day. So yeah. Without going into too much detail, it was just getting a little bit too much for me. So I made a huge change in my life and people always say, oh, it's the best thing I've ever done. And I don't think it's the best thing I've ever done because it's, I still would love to have a glass of wine right now, but I just don't. So that's that. And thanks for asking that question. The next question was on my Frank Buckley spotlight. Gosh, I did that a while back. I didn't have too much fun with those ones. And this one comes from ZFQ, Ooh, I can't pronounce that one. I'm just gonna call you person on a horse. I wanna blind by Angie, so I need to ask two questions. Is it sweet, overly sweet fragrance because I cannot stand those types? And two, how was the longevity in Siage on your skin? Thank you in advance. That's really tough because I did that spotlight such a long time ago. Hmm. I would love to be able to answer your question. I remember that I didn't have the best time with those fragrances, especially one of the lines because there were two lines the ones that were centered around music i think they were marginally better but i honestly can't remember angie i'm really sorry so i would love to answer but i can't remember it i remember the one that was called i'm not going to say it because it's the name of a drug and i might get in trouble the youtube police might come knocking at my door really sorry i can't remember i would probably go onto fragrantica and read a couple of reviews maybe and see what other people say yeah i wish i could be more helpful the next question is on, was on my zoologist one I redid recently. I re-ranked zoologist fragrances 27 to 1 from least favourite to favourite. And this is from Amalunet A. What is your top five ever niche and designer? I'm just going to remember what is on my Fragrantica top five shelf. It is Dolce & Gabbana Red Cap, Zoologist Moth, Surreptitiously checks Fragrantica profile. Nanban by Arquiste. Tom Ford's White Patchouli and Portrait of a Lady by Frederick Mell. It's right there. See? Hello. The next question came from Another View, and this was on my Sophia Grossman video that I did about 10 great or famous fragrances by Sophia Grossman. He says, wrong thread, I know. Well, there's no wrong thread. No one thread. Do you layer different houses? I tried Bee Pal snake oil with some stuff and it's really nice with curbside violet from Gorilla. I don't layer, period. I, I have, I have done it for fun, but I have this weird thing where I feel like 
if I wear a fragrance, I want to enjoy it for how the perfume are intended. So I know it's super fun to layer things and create your own little concoctions, but I'm a little bit anal in that way where I just, I wear something for what it is, unless it's something that's meant to be layered. So for instance, a Jo Malone perfume where they encourage it or something that's, I've got a 10 mil by a company called something that I can't remember, Veronica something, and it's meant to be a simple woody thing that you can layer under or over things to woodify your fragrance. But yeah, I don't layer. I have, if you wanna talk about Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab, I have layered snake oil with Scheherazade before, which are two of my favorites, and it was really, really good. Quick layering tip. Always wear the fragrances, if you're layering two, on either side of your neck and on opposite wrists. If you spray something on top of the other thing, you risk drowning it out. So if you put it on both sides, you're gonna be projecting both fragrances at the same time. Just a little pro tip for you. The next question came from Courtney Co. And this was on my Estee Lauder Pleasures video, another really old one. Love this review, I'm curious, would you recommend this for a blind buy? No, I do not recommend blind buying. Period. I know it's really exciting to blind buy and when you get the parcel and you're like, oh my gosh, it's gonna be fun. And then you just get disappointed a lot of the time. You can be successful, but I don't recommend blind buying at all. I'm in need of a new fragrance, but with COVID policies and needing to wear masks, I have a really difficult time smelling anything through my mask, which makes going into stores and testing them out right now pretty pointless. I feel your pain. I know wanting to smell things, yeah, it's, you can't touch things. You can't really take your mask off to smell things. And if you manage to do either of those things, you might have COVID and you can't smell anyway. It's just a big swirling mass of ow. In answer to your question, I think that pleasures could be viewed as a safe blind buy. It's a beautiful a sort of aqueous spring floral. But going back to what I said, I don't recommend to blind buy at all. I would try and get a sample from somewhere so you can smell it at home, in your own time, with your mask off. And you know, you can dance around with it, do whatever you want, you know, just have fun. Thank you for your question. The next question was on my Estee Lauder, another uh, Estee Lauder fragrance. Oh, what even is that one? I think it was something wood. Uh, it's from Dear Majid and it says, is that a man or a woman perfume use? Thanks. Majid, on this channel, we try and break out of that stereotype every single month. It's whatever you want it to be. Smell it and see if you like it. And if you like it, wear it. The next question was on my March questions and it's from Diesel1210. Question, a city on fire or T-Rex? I have got samples of both, but every day I change my mind on which I love more. I need you to make up my mind before I go full bottle, I guess. If I go city on fire, I can get a 50 mil of fawn as well. Well, I would definitely say get city on fire then. Well, Diesel, let me give you a proper answer. Both of them are in the same realm. Both of them are centered around Cade oil, which is the backbone of each fragrance. City on Fire is much more dry. It's much more herbal. It's got a little bit more of a transparency where T-Rex is much more complex, much more expensive, unfortunately. But it, it, to me, it's more exciting. I think City on Fire, this is only my opinion, of course. City on Fire, I think I would get bored of if I owned a bottle of it. I would. T-Rex gives you more. You get more out of it when you wear it and every time I spray it, it's something, you know, it's like a whoa fragrance. And yeah, I would say my personal preference would be T-Rex. Um, I'm biased, Zoologist is my favorite brand, so of course I'm gonna say that. But hey, try out Fawn as well, why not? I'll put a link in the description. The next question came from FW and also on my March questions. Oh my, oh my. You know and like Drag Race too. Yes, I do. Which fragrances do you think my favorites, Bianca Del Rio and Ben De La Creme should wear? In my video, I actually talked about Bianca Del Rio because Bianca Del Rio was a winner and my video was about the winners of Drag Race. I gave her Moth because it's playful and smoky and the artwork reminded me of the dark makeup that Bianca Del Rio wears. Ben De La Creme, mm. Ben de la Creme is the vintage queen. She's the housewife from the 50s. So I'm gonna say Ban de Caron, the one that you tip into a bath or you can spray it on, comes in a bottle, a bottle shaped bottle, but it looks like an actual bottle with a lid that you can pour. Uh, I'm gonna say Ban de Caron, gentle, friendly, nice, and floral and throwback. That's how I view Ben de la Creme. 
Thank you for your question. The next one came from Fiona Louise, also on my March questions. Hi Tom, are there any modern perfumes that you have smelled that you that had you not known they were recent creations would have fooled your nose into believing that they were authentic vintage scents? I hear that Rogue Perfumery use ingredients that were used in perfumes in the past. Have you tried any of them? Loving your Q&A videos. Yes, there is a brand that instantly springs to mind. It's an amazing English brand called Papillon and it's owned by a goddess of a woman called Liz Moores who owns an owl and she's a bit witchy but she's absolutely beautiful and gosh all of her perfumes feel vintage that is kind of her thing she likes animalic she creates fragrances now they are she is a kind of new-ish brand and everything I've smelled from her I have liked so Definitely try out Papillon, especially Bengal Rouge. It's amazing, by the way. Reviewed it if you want to go and check it out. And she has a new fragrance as well called Spell 125, which I am probably going to review very soon. And also talking about Rogue. Yes, I have. So Rogue Perfumery are a brand that are, from what I see, on Etsy mainly. And they do make fragrances outside of IFRA regulations. There's one that gets quite a lot of attention. That one has a abundance of oak moss in it and it smells really vintage so Rogue Perfumery and Papillon are the two brands I would direct any of you to try if you want a modern brand that makes a vintage style fragrance. Thank you for your question. The next one is from Frag Chi-Town. I thought it was Chi-Town but I realised that means Chicago right? That's what you guys in America call Chicago? Chi-Town? Yeah? Also on March Questions says, do you have a favorite juniper forward perfume? Thank you for your videos, Tom. They are always a treat. Well, you're very welcome. The one that immediately spring springs to mind is the new fragrance from Diptyque. I re recently reviewed it. It's called Orpheon and it is a juniper forward fragrance. Ultra unisex, really clean, little bit of jasmine, um, out of the shower, fresh and I've not smelled a juniper fragrance before that doesn't have that gin-like feeling. So Orpheon by Diptyque, brand new fragrance and it's really easy to wear and makes you feel like you just stepped out of a shower. Hope that answers your question. The next question was also on my ranking zoologist and it's from Gopika Madav. I think you're in my group as well. Random question, what is that music in the outro? It's beautiful. I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. I use stock music that comes with my video editing software and there's so many on there there's about 50 and i just choose whichever one fits the mood a lot of the time i will try and find out and message you about it the next question was from groovy far out of sight neato 67 i love that name <laughs> this was on my vivian westwood boudoir review it says do they still sell this i need it i don't think they do i do see it online and it is still an amazing perfume don't believe the reviews when people tell you that it smells like panties and all of these weird awful strange things it's a honeyed rose floral perfume that you can probably still find, but I just don't think Vict uh, Victoria Westwood. Who the hell is that? I don't think Vivian Westwood sell it anymore, unfortunately. Their perfumes seem to be just kind of here and there. And there was one called Alice something. And it's, I, just, I don't know, it's just a bit strange. I, I don't think they do though. So you'll have to do a little bit of hunting to find that one. The next question is from Heid, Heida Nada. This was on my Amafi fragrance video that I did with the 2,400 pounds cost perfumes. Could you please recommend me a fragrance that smells like fresh cantaloupe and another like a smoked marshmallow? I know this, they sound very simple, but I can't find a nice one. Hmm. When I think of melon, cantaloupe melon, I always think of Davidoff Cool Water for women. It's an aqueous melon-like fragrance. There's probably others. If anyone else wants to chime in, as always, help the people out. <laughs> they might be able to, um, they might be reading it afterwards and see. I would say Davidoff Cool Water for women, relatively cheap as well and it's really pleasant, I think. My old boss used to wear that, actually, quite a lot. Smoked marshmallow, that's a tough one. The only marshmallow, there's two that I can think of. There's one by a company called Moor, M-O-R. Never tried the fragrance, but every time I see marshmallow recommendations come up, that one comes up. Don't know if it's smoked, though. 
The other one would be Dolce & Gabbana Femme, the newer version in the dark burgundy type packaging. Really marshmallowy, however not smoked. So I don't know, I've not really smelled a smoked marshmallow before. Maybe try layering, going back on everything I just said a minute ago. I wouldn't personally, but if you can find something that's a touch smoky and marshmallowy, maybe put them together and see what happens. But yeah, I don't really wear super sweet fragrances like that, so I don't often seek them out. If I saw marshmallow in a note list, I would probably think, mm, I don't know. But try more marshmallow and try Dolce & Gabbana Pour Femme. The next question was on my 10 favorite Lush perfumes and it's from Jerry Ryan and it says, how is Lust not on your list? I don't know, you know, Jerry, I think I've moved away from it. I still think it's really, really great, but I have heard that I've got the, the little black bottle of it and I've heard that the newer one in the tall square bottle isn't quite as strong or quite as vampy or quite as explosive and it doesn't last as long. So that's why I didn't want to put it on the list. I feel like if something has changed and a lot of people are saying that it doesn't last and it's this and that, I think it's unfair to tell you guys to try it or talk about it and, you know, make you think, oh, maybe I should buy that. You know, it's, it's a bit of a tricky situation, but because of what I've heard, I've, I stick to my bottle because I know it's really strong, but there are other ones, newer ones, that I find more interesting now. So I hope that answers your question. Next question on March questions from Kay Botchenek. Hi, Tom. Can you recommend any modern, interesting aldehydic fragrances? Yes, I can. It really just depends on what type of aldehydes you want because there are so many different kinds. There's there's the most common one, which is the one that's in Chanel number no. five. There's one that smells like peaches. There's one that smells like strawberries. There are multiple different aldehyde material type things in fragrances. If you're talking about the buttery kind of golden soapy aldehyde, which is the most common one that people ask about, I will recommend to you a fragrance by Berry, and the perfume is called Concurrent. I'm gonna have to put that in the video because it's a really strange name. Really, really nice brand actually. I've tried, recently I went to a meetup with a few people and I tried more of this brand. Lots of theirs are really good. This one is a huge focus on aldehydes. If you really want to smell the aldehydes in a perfume, this is a really good example of one. Also, kind of pricey unfortunately but if i don't know what people's budgets are or how curious you are there's a brand called mdci and they have a perfume called shepra palatan kind of pricey but a gorgeous aldehydic shepra hopefully that helps mm. maybe i should try and think of some cheaper ones but there are none that I can think of that use aldehydes in such a pronounced way. Those two just jumped to my brain and I do this off of the cuff, so I hope that helps. Next one, also on March, questions from Katya Murayeva. Hello dear Tom, here's my question. If you would imagine a perfume for Professor Snape from Harry Potter, what would it be? <laughs> oh gosh, that's a tough one. I would think of, let me think, hmm. Maybe Encre Noir by Lalique. That super black, looking into the depths of darkness, woody fragrance, kind of sharp edges box. I don't know why. Hmm. I would say Encre Noir by Lalique. Dark, very sultry, sexy, kind of mysterious, woody perfume. I really like that one, actually. And it's kind of cheap as well. I don't know if Professor Snape would wear a cheap fragrance. I don't know if he'd wear any fragrance. But that's my answer, I hope you like it. The next one comes from Christine Ann B and it's on my March questions as well. Okay, I thought of a good question. What would you, as a tenured perfume enthusiast, tell baby Tom if you could give him one piece of advice before he started his fragrance journey? For me, it would probably be less is more. I wish I had less bottles, but an overall more assorted and quality collection. Yeah, I've probably got lots of advice for myself when I look back at my older videos definitely in relation to YouTube be more confident I think that really helps because I wasn't at the beginning but in terms of collecting yeah my my advice to myself would be don't blind buy stuff in order to try and fill gaps in your collection because I like to have at least something of everything something where each gap is filled where I can reach for anything that takes my fancy on any given day so try as many things as you can 
but don't blind buy. That way you can really curate your collection, go out and sniff as many things as you can and focus on one thing. So for instance, I'm still trying to find the perfect Ylang fragrance. So <laughs> I'm still trying Ylang fragrances all the time. And when I come across one that hits the spot, I will then add that to my collection. So that's what I do now. At the beginning, it's kind of like a hoarding crazed situation where you just want a lot of stuff and you ultimately end up with with things that you just don't like and you're just not going to wear and they get cast aside and I end up giving them away so try everything and try and look at it with a curative mind as opposed to a hoarding mind that's what I tell myself thanks for your question Christine the next question was also on March and it's from Christina Kessel it says where is the bird hmm are you referring to Bo, my previous bird? He has now spread his wings and gone to birdie heaven. But these two little buggers over here, they're right there looking at me. I have two birds now, two beautiful parrots from Brazil. They're called Neo and Zazu. <laughs> they have been in my video before and it was kind of chaotic. They're always here watching, waiting for me to let them fly to my shoulder. So the old bird though, yeah, dearly departed Bo, he, he's gone sad times. The next question is on my Serge Luton's Feel en Berlin, I think that's what it was called, and it's from Lavinia Snow. Is this a perfume to be worn during cold days? Can it be worn in spring? That particular Serge Luton's fragrance, it's a very full-bodied, sweet, jammy rose. There's a, there's a, such a big amount of body to it. It's not, it doesn't have any transparency, it's not light. I think it's a rose that can be worn in any season because of how thick it is. But really, it, it depends on you. It depends on your personal preference. If you haven't got the fragrance and you're wondering, can it be an all-rounder? I would say yes. Yeah, I, I'll leave it there. I, otherwise, I'll just keep going on about it. I, I think it can be worn on many occasions because it's quite a strong, full-bodied rose. It's, it's definitely not got any greenery that would make it feel spring. So yeah, try it out and see. It's really, really lovely. The next question is from Miss Derry and it was on my March questions. Has Sol de Janeiro have white chocolate in it? What's a perfume do you wear and are always guaranteed a compliment? I don't know what Sol de Janeiro is, um, but I know we were talking about white chocolate in the last video, so I don't know what that is. I can't answer, I'm afraid. But what perfume do you wear and always guaranteed a compliment? It's always the same answer for me. There is a fragrance by Andy Tower and it's called L'Air du Désert Marocain. Hexagonal or pentagonal blue bottle. Every time I've worn it, I've had someone, if it's not a compliment, it's somebody curious about what it is. And they, they say, what is that smell? Because it's, whether you love it or hate it, I think it's amazing. It's a beautiful labdanum with cumin spice, a little bit of dryness, it's sweet, it's ambery, it's one of the best orientals and it was in my, it's actually in my top 10 perfumes ever so I've been complimented on that one everywhere, airports, taxi drivers, bars, um, just all over and I love it. I haven't worn it for a long time actually but Andy Towers 02 Le du Desert Marocain is the answer to that one. Thank you for your question. The next one is from Mrs Press, I hope you're doing well, we are missing you on the group. I will tell you that. I have a question. Will you consider reviewing Francesca Bianchi perfumes? I'm not sure how readily available they are in the UK, but if you can get your hands on them, I'd love to get your take on them. Um, this question, do you know what? I am this close to buying the sample set. I think on my payday this month, I think I'm just gonna get them because the curiosity level is reaching high peaks for me. I just really, really wanna try them. I have a feeling they're gonna be absolutely fantastic. They pop up on my group all the time. So I am gonna buy them. I'm gonna make a commitment to you, Selena, okay? Right now. I am gonna buy them on my payday and I am going to do a spotlight on them because I just can't wait any longer. I just, I need to smell them and I can get them in the UK. Um, there is a sample pack, so I'm just gonna get them and I will be talking about them on my channel sometime soon. I commit to you. Mrs. Press, again, <laughs> this was on the £2,400 perfume video. Who's the friend? Is it someone I could guess? Sorry, not sorry, I'm being nosy. The reason she's asking that is because I did, said in the video, I did not buy these fragrances, by the way. There's no way I would buy three perfumes 
that cost £2,400 each. I was given them to try by a friend. So, um, it's just a friend. <laughs> it's, yeah, somebody that I work with who had them and said, do you want to try them? So, there. Yeah, just a friend. Next question, also on March, must love fragrances. Uh, nice to see you smiling, Tom. I think we're all happy because lockdown eases today. A different question for you. Which of your fragrances most makes you feel most like a boss? I didn't know you were a gamer. You have many facets. Your nerdiest fragrance too. <laughs> I, of course I have many facets. I'm a, fragrance is my biggest facet. It's like one whole side of me, but I have other facets too, of course. So. The fragrance that makes me feel like a boss is Portrait of a Lady. There's something about how unapologetic that fragrance is. When you wear it, you're always in danger of it wearing you because it's it's just a lot. It's a whole big lot of incense, patchouli, rose. But I do wear that when I want to feel super confident. I have other ones as well, but that's the one that I always say makes me feel like a badass. My nerdiest fragrance, I don't know. That's a really tough question. Nerdiest fragrance. Hmm. I guess it might be Sloth by Zoologist because the sloth in the picture is a little wilderness explorer type person, I think. Oh no, I'm getting that mixed up. No, that's not, that's not the right answer. You've really put me on the spot with that one. I honestly can't, I don't know. Nerdiest? I don't know. I really don't know. I've been sitting here for five minutes, even though it's been cut. I've been sitting here thinking, hmm, I, I really have no idea. I will think about it though. The next question was from Paul's selection and it was on my five discoveries and five disappointments video. I'm going to make that a monthly thing because you guys really seem to like that. I'm always sniffing things. So I'm going to do that every month from now on, I think. On my skin, Exit the King by Itali Boudorange somewhat reminds me of Bat from Zoologist. Have you tried to compare these two? Wow, that's interesting. I don't see the similarity between them. I guess it depends on which bat you're talking about, the old one or the new one. Exit the King is a full-on sheepra and I guess there is a little bit of earthiness to it or cashmeran maybe in there, which is in Bat. But the new Bat is really about fruit and leather and a little bit of a sour, spoiled, fruity thing. So I personally don't see the similarities, but I haven't done them side by side, like you said. So maybe I should try that out and see. Thanks for your question. The next question is from Rich Mitch, and it says, it was on my Diptyque Orpheon review, and it says, have you seen the Diptyque bracelets? Yes, I have. Diptyque make these perfumed bracelets. It comes in a thing like that and you it's kind of like dental floss where you would pull it out and then cut it and then you put it on your wrist and snip it together and it comes in multiple scents i think it's a really innovative way to perfume yourself i like that idea so yes i have seen them and they're really cool they actually sell brooches as well that are that release perfume very very cool but yes rich i have seen them they are great the next question is from Richard Legg on my March questions. A question for you, if money was no object, which three fragrances would you buy? Right now, it would be Volo as 686 by Profumum Roma. It has been discontinued though, so that ship has sailed. Another one would be um, Santa Love by Nishan. I also think that one has been discontinued because it is not on their website anymore. And the reason I want that one so badly is because I think it smells like the original vintage Samsara. So that's how the dots connect for that one. But I, yeah, I don't know. I don't see it very often. So I think I, that one has gone as well. And the third one would be Rituale by Menda Rosa. I've wanted that fragrance for a good couple of years now. It's 180 something pounds though. So eek, but it's a really beautiful, floral, golden, uh, honeysuckle, kind of narcissus type smell. Super elegant perfume. I mean, Mendita Rosa make really great fragrances. Kind of edgy, kind of strange, but this one is one of their florals that I think is wonderful. So the bottle is awesome as well. I really want that fragrance. So those are the three that I would buy if money was no object. The next question is also on March and it's from Ruth Ann McKinnon. For your next Q&A, could you please tell us about your working history in perfume? I've seen actually, Ruth, that you've asked this quite a lot of times, so I'm gonna answer it for you. I haven't been purposefully ignoring you. 
it's just a little bit of a thing. I basically, to, to cut a long story short, I used to work in a really cool niche perfume boutique in the centre of London. Um, and it was really cool. I mean, in terms of the perfumes that, that were sold there, it was it's a great treasure trove. I've also worked for Lush, which isn't necessarily perfume. It is now, but uh, yeah, it was definitely with smells. So that's it. There's not really much exciting stuff to say, except that I worked in a shop. <laughs> but it was a, a really cool shop that sold a lot of uh, great fragrances. So I hope that answers your question, finally. I haven't been ignoring you, believe me. We're coming to the end. Also on March from Sabine Vec Vecmane. I don't know if I've pronounced that right. Hi, you are my favorite fragrance reviewer. That is very, very sweet. Also, what is that emoji? Oh, it's two little hearts. How lovely. Question, do perfume manufacturers add colors and dyes to make juices certain colors or is it only essential oils and resins that give the tint? Yes, they do. Not all of them but some of them do. For instance, Zoologist, if you look at their squid perfume, it's a very deep sea blue color. They've got their moth perfume, which is actually black, and there's dragonfly, which is purple. Um, most of the time, perfume sits between clear and, shall we say, urine? <laughs> I don't know. Very faint yellow, right up to dark yellow. Some of them are super dark brown, if, they, if it's got things like cocoa, I guess, in it. Some of them are green from oak moss. So not all perfumes do that, not all brands do that, but I guess some of them to try and sell the idea. You know, when you look at a pink spring perfume and it's bright pink, it just adds to the whole overall effect and look. Or if you've got an aquatic perfume that's blue, it really, I guess it's one of those, it makes your eyes a bit happy. And when you look at a blue perfume, you kind of get to know what it is before you've smelled it. So yes, they do, but not all of them do. And I don't think it affects the perfume that much. I think they do, they must do lots of tests and things. So that's a really interesting question, but the answer is yes, they do. Okay, last two questions. This one's from Jackie Bits on my March questions. If money was not an issue and you and your partner could pick up and travel, where would you choose very first that you've not been to? And what place would you visit as your last stop before returning home? I, that's easy. The Philippines. The Philippines is the top of my list as a place to travel to. I've already been to Vietnam and I've already been to Thailand three times. Southeast Asia to me is made of magic. I, in fact, just Asia as a continent is my favorite continent. So Philippines for a good year. That's what I would want to do. <laughs> and then I would probably stop over at India on the way back once India calms down, because I know India is going through a really tough time at the moment with COVID. I hope if anyone watching this is from India, my prayers are with you. You're going through the awfulness and I really hope it subsides really soon. But yes, I won't want to go to India as soon as I can, but Philippines, oh my gosh, please take me there right now. And the last question is from James Nash and also on my March questions. Have there been fragrances that you love but your significant other couldn't stand so you had to sneak outside on the balcony to wear them? Just wondering. I wish I had a balcony, James. <laughs> yes, the one that springs to mind would be Michael Kors, the original Michael Kors perfume. We went on holiday to Greece and I dropped the perfume on the tiles of the hotel room because in Greece there's not really much carpet going on. It's more about tiles because it's so hot there and it filled the entire corridor because it was the original formula of our hotel and room. So now basically anything with tuberos is a no-go. It's a bit really bad memory for my partner and the way that smelled. It kind of it permeated our entire holiday. I loved it. My partner did not. So anything with tuberos now is a bit of an issue. So we'll just leave it at that. And that is the end of the questions and answers video for April. I will look and see what you guys ask in May and I will talk about them in June. I hope you like this video. I'm Ouch 110, trying to make the world smell better, one video at a time. I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye. Ooh.